Hi, this is PDF Bergsburg Arcade at bergsburgarcade.com and this is tutorial 136. Now in our last tutorial where we left off, we had just created the structure for our panels in our character window. And in this video, I want to actually start working on our equipment panel. So let's just take a quick look to see where we left off. I'm going to hide the inventory and we have the little tabs up here to select uh, what panel we want to open. And down here it tells us what panel is supposed to be displayed. We're going to be working on our equipment panel, and right now, only thing I'm working with is weapons. So I'm just going to create a little button up here for to show what weapon we currently have equipped. Now we're going to want a place to actually store what items we have equipped, and I'm going to be storing those in my character or player character script. And it'd be nice to have some sort of enumerable list to show, you know, like what's equipped where. And we'll get into that. But right now, since we're only working with the weapon. Uh, let's just put one button up there just for the weapon. So I'll start off by creating a private static. It's an item. And I'll call it equipped weapon. And then I'm just going to set some public accessors for it. So public static item. And I'm actually going to call this equipment. Well, let's just start off, let's keep it simple, equip weapon. And I just finished picking up a new keyboard, a new Apple keyboard, but I got one of the smaller ones that doesn't have the number pad at the side because I just want to get rid of some of the cables on my desktop. It's going to take me a little bit to get used to the smaller keyboard, I think. But anyway, we'll set up the get. And we'll also do a set. And of course the get just returns our equipped weapon. And set just sets the equipped weapon to equal the value we're going to pass it in. So I'll save that off. I'm going to head over to the my GUI script. I'm going to come down to our display equipment. And I'm going to comment out these debugs since we know they're working. I might want to use them later on in case something goes wrong, so I'm not going to completely get rid of them yet. And I'm going to draw a button for our weapon. So I'll say GUI dot button is equal to, and for now we'll just hard cast it in. And I'll make it five from the side. Well, let's say 20 down. Uh, I believe our buttons so far have been 40 by 40. And I'll throw some quick test text in here. I'll just say weapon. And I'm not going to actually add any functionality for that button. So I'll come back into Unity, start it back up, and we'll take a look to make sure the button's just showing up. And I'll hide the inventory. And there it is, but we're always going to want it down quite a bit more. So, oh, let's move it down another 40. I head back into Mono Develop. I'll put it at 60. Start it back up. And that looks good enough. Oh, well, not quite. I'm going to move it down another 40, and that should be fine. Then again, I'm going to have to move it later on once I start actually styling things and moving things around, but that's fine. We now have a button for it. Now, what we want to do is be able to uh, click uh, an item in our inventory, double click it, and throw it into our equipped item slot over here, our equipped weapon. So I'll head back into my GUI, and I'm going to want to be able to detect when something has been double clicked. So I'm going to come up to the top. And uh, I'm going to be putting it under, I guess we'll put it under the inventory for now, or at least the set of variables that we have set up for the inventory. And there's two variables I'm going to want here. And I'll make them both private. Uh, the first one's going to be a float. And what this is going to be used for is to set some sort of value where we want to be able to time the, well, to get the time between the clicks. 
And if it's greater than a certain value, or sorry, less than a certain value, we're going to call that a double click. So I'm going to call it double click timer. And I'm just going to start off at zero since we've been putting them all up here. And I'm also going to want another one to compare it to. And uh, I guess the double click would be anything under, well, let's say half a second. And I'm just going to make this one a constant. So private. constant float double click timer and threshold this could be equal to dot 5f make sure you get the f i often forget that and get an error for it so any click Anytime we click twice within five seconds, it's going to count that as a double click. And we're also going to want to be able to store the item that's clicked. So we know which one to move over. So private item. And we'll say clicked item. Or let's say selected item. That sounds a little bit better. And then let's go down to our, well, let's start shrinking some of these up. I want to come down to our inventory window right down here. And here's where we're detecting a click. So we can start the timer for the click when the player clicks one of the buttons. And then if they click the button again, we'll check to see if it's the same one that was clicked previously and the time that's elapsed since the last click. And if you know, it's the same item exactly. and it was okay, clicked the within that certain so time in case it that's if we'll block. And the first thing we're going to check to see is the double click timer uh, equal to zero or not. If it's equal to zero, that means this is the first click that we've done on this item. So we'll say if double click timer is equal to zero. And then we'll want to do more checks there. But other than that, we're just going to set it to else. And if the double click is timer is not equal to zero, we're going to set it to our current time, uh, how long the game has been running. So we do that by going double click timer is equal to time dot time. And since this is going to be the first click on the item, we we'll also want to set our selected item to equal the item that they clicked on, which we can get from using player character dot inventory and then the index of this button that they just clicked. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to add an and statement. And I'm also going to check just to make sure that that selected item does not equal null. So now what we're going to want to do is check to see the time difference between the first click and the second click. And if it's within that, you know, that time frame that we set up in our constant, then you know, we're going to progress along doing something. So we're going to say if now we're going to get time dot time minus double click time and we're going to check to see if it's less than the constant we set up top which was our double click timer threshold and let's just throw a debug out here and we'll just show that it's a double click so I'll come back into unity uh, we'll let it recompile make sure there's no errors there's none so we'll start it up and I'm going to close my character panel and I'm going to open up a chest. We'll just grab all the items in it. And then I'll click once, wait a bit, click twice. Nothing should happen, but if I click twice quickly, still nothing is happening. So we're going to want to go in and see what's actually going on. So I'm going to go back into Mono Develop. 
So we'll take a look here. So we're checking to see if the double click timer is equal to zero, which is actually our error. We're checking to see if it does not equal zero. And if it does not equal zero, then we're going to check to see uh, the, the time difference between the first and second click. And I'm actually going to append something on to the debug log. I also want to see exactly what item I'm clicking on. So I'm just going to grab the player character. Oops. <laughs> New keyboards. Uh, dot inventory. The item we want in the inventory. The cat just jumped on my kid's toy horse. So just to ignore the horse in the background. And I'm just going to grab its name. So we'll head back into Unity and make sure there's no errors. It recompiled. I'm going to start it back up and hopefully this time it works. So I'll open the chest. I'm also going to close my character panel or my character window. And I'm just going to grab all these items. So we have them all in our inventory. And if I double click one, it shows me that I'm getting the Silithia. Let's try the sword. Now it's not resetting the timer. So we'll have to work on that. But it appears that we're actually approaching our 10 minute mark. So I'm going to call this one done since we can detect the first double click. Now we are going to have to reset it in the next tutorial, but we'll continue on from there. I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye bye.